In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Merry Christmas. We gather today to celebrate the Christmas, eight days as one great day. But today, by looking at, it's like a jewel with facets, today we're invited to keep Christmas by considering the mystery of the Holy Family and also asking God's blessing upon our families and asking that we might recognize the Lord dwelling with each of us. Brothers and sisters, let us, as we celebrate Christmas, acknowledge our sins and so make ready to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity, and so in the joy of your house delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abraham, Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I'm your shield, and will make your reward very great. But Abraham said, O oh Lord, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless and have as my heir the steward of my house, Eliezer? Abraham continued, See, you have given me no offspring, so no so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, look at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so he added, shall, be, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah, as he said he would, and did for her as he promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time, at the time that God had stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac to this son of his, whom Sarah bore him, the word of the Lord. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he's past normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile, sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sands on the seashores. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol, the word of the Lord.
Christ control your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. I love the image of Abraham in both our first reading in the Gospel, of descendants as numerous as the stars of the sky. There's two sets of readings for this feast. The one has that famous image of wives being submissive to husbands and fathers not nagging their children. I thought during the pandemic I'd give everybody a break and not choose that set of readings. But I love this set that focuses so much on Abraham. And I thought perhaps it's important to hear right now because in this pandemic, perhaps at least early on, families were saying that they had grown closer together during this time. I don't know about how, how that feels as it has worn on, you know, so long, if that's still there. I feel that in my own family, but I don't live with them either, you know, during this whole particular time that we're going through. But I think even as we want to focus on that and to recognize God's presence in our own family and in those dynamics. I think it's also good to look a little bit bigger than that as well. As a preacher, I'm convinced that we need to be thinking about what happens not only in the here and the now, but after this pandemic as well. Will this pandemic have caused us to really turn in words more. There was a scary survey to me that was in yesterday's newspaper that said that dramatically numbers had changed from last year. When they asked individuals, do you feel very generous at this time of the year? It had been over 50% of Americans that would say yes, and it dropped way lower, like a third. And then, are you very grateful? Those numbers had dropped dramatically as well. I'm concerned about that kind of turning inward. And I think we're called to really see things in a much bigger way. I'll never forget the time I first saw a picture of Abraham. With, in the one that I saw, there were three children on his lap, Christians, Jews, and Muslims. But I have a picture here of Abraham with all of those descendants on his lap, all of those children of Father Abraham. And our readings today, I think, call us to see, even as we're concerned about being around others too much and taking the precautions seriously, how we're called still to see our connectedness with each other. That's why I love that right away, people like Pope Francis called us to be worried about protecting, not so much ourselves, but protecting others. And finding ways to be filled with really the creativity of love to reach out to others. May these readings tonight in this Feast of the Holy Family. Help us to consider that. 
our connectedness with everyone, the way that we are all connected one with the other. I think this feast, as much as it calls us to recognize Christ dwelling as close as in our own homes, it's also a prophetic feast that calls us to see that connectedness with everyone that God has made. Very grateful. I was scared during Advent with our Advent project, but over it was $15,165 that was given to help those children and families in our area. Very grateful for that. Our beautiful tree with all of those good deeds. I enjoyed, as we were decorating it this year, looking at all of those different good deeds that people wrote about on the tree and being inspired by them as well. But an image of Abraham like this, I think, is powerful with all those children of Abraham showing. But just as this medieval image shows us, there's another kind of popular medieval image of Abraham, too. And it's this picture that shows, uh, well, this is, again, all of the children of Abraham then. And then I think we have another as well. Another picture. That's it, OK. I had a picture. Uh, the wrong one, I think, went up. But I had a picture of Abraham with Jesus, with Jesus on his lap, with Jesus, because he's a descendant of Abraham. But that beautiful image of Jesus then in his lap, we're called to see Christ in one another. How our world would be transformed if day to day, in our families, if we could really see Christ in one another. This year, one of the most powerful things that somebody said to me, I think it was waiting in line before the pandemic at a buffet somewhere that I was, uh, not a buffet like that, but a, a dinner where you went up buffet style. And somebody said to me about the priest at their wedding, that they remembered his homily, and that the priest said, if you live marriage out the right way, when you see Christ, you say, Jesus, you look so much like my husband, or you look so much like my wife. That's when marriage has been lived out well. What a beautiful image. How we're called, how our world would be made different if we could see Christ in our spouse, if we could see Christ in our children, if we could see Christ in every member of the human family and see that we are all connected together. Merry Christmas. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us make our prayers to the Lord. That we might recognize Christ dwelling with each of us in our homes, we pray to the Lord. That we might recognize Christ in spouses and children and family members and in all the human family, we pray to the Lord. That God might bless our families and homes with safety and health and well-being and blessing, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and for their healing, we pray to the Lord. For an end to the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. For those who are caring for the sick and the ill, we pray to the Lord. For children, we pray to the Lord. For those grieving and mourning and all whose hearts are heavy, we pray to the Lord. For those who are poor and in need, we pray to the Lord. For peace for all God's children, we pray to the Lord. And for our loved ones who have died, we pray especially for Pauline, Clem who died, for Heather, Rose who have died, and for Harry and Mary Lindner for whom we offer this Mass. We pray to the Lord. And pausing, let us call to mind the prayers held within our hearts. For these prayers and for those in our prayer basket, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear these prayers, for we make them through Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awful mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours and has begot and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, and as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Blessed is he who 
Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through who him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Bless, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. Thank you to everyone for making this unique Christmas beautiful. Thank you to all of our musicians, to all of our liturgical ministers, our reader, our greeters. Thank you to the parish staff, to those who are live streaming, to Michelle and to James especially. Thank you to Paul for all that he's done. Thank you to everybody who decorated the church. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who contributed to that giving tree to help us to take care of all those children and families that over $15,000, $15,165. Thank you for that as well. The parish calendars are by the door of the church if you haven't gotten any, and they're also in the red and green bin on the porch of the rectory as, as well. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.